Hey, hello class, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to show you guys how to uh, start your, your project, right, uh, for your logos. And um, we're going to be learning um, a number of new uh, features and commands on, on Rhino in order to develop your designs, right? So I have here a couple of samples that I'll be using, right? Uh, that I made uh, a while ago. Um, that I'll be using just as an example here. Okay. Um, additionally, um, I'll be I'll be um, referencing some of the uh, commands that that you guys have uh, worked on. Uh, working on your labs uh, through the uh, training manual. All right. So the first thing that we got to make sure is that your logos or the files that you'll be using, uh, they're in, in, in an image format. Uh, and that will be JPEG uh, as an example, right? Um, you guys should have PDFs that you guys upload it, right? Uh, most likely an image file as well. But if you don't, I just want to show you how simple it is, right? Especially, I'm using Adobe Acrobat. If you do have Acrobat, and I believe you, it needs to be the pro version, right? Once you open a PDF, go to File, Save As, and choose a different folder, right? Um, I just need to get this window, right? And here under Type, Save As Type, you click on that drop down menu, and you have all your different options, and uh, JPEG is one of them, right? And you can actually uh, change the, the format of the file so that it becomes a JPEG. And I'll go ahead and save, click save. And you get a image file, right? Because that's, that's what we need here in Rhino. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and create a new file. I have a Rhino open. Let's go to File, New. So that we get this uh, this window, this template file window. Let's go ahead and select small objects, inches, right, and hit open. Uh, the reason that we do this is so that our units are taken care of. We'll go ahead and type units. Our units are set to inches. Now let's go ahead and change our display uh, distance display to feet and inches as well. And we can leave the precision, display precision, at an eighth. All right, but I'll show you guys here. Um, you know, the higher the, the precision or the higher the tolerance, the, the, the highest the precision that you get here, all the way to a 28th of an inch, which, uh, you know, you be have to working with very, very uh, precise work, such as jewelry or, you know, I mean, mechanical work um, for that amount of precision. For, our, for us, most likely one eighth will be more than enough um, most of the cases, right? So again, inches, uh, precision, we hit OK. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, bring in the image, right? For that, the command is picture. Right? If you go ahead and type picture, enter, right? Um, you can browse, right? Or you should browse uh, through your images, right? Uh, for the image file. In this case, is your last... Um, how many you have? Six logos, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, the last ones that you should have. Um, and as, these are the files that I have in the, as an example. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one. Click open. Right now, your cursor changes and a command is active. Right again, how do I know? Well, my command line up here is asking me first corner of picture. Right? Uh, so if you go ahead and click, and you drag your cursor, you'll see that you're bringing in that photograph as a reference, right? Um, and it's waiting, right, for us to define uh, the second corner of the command of the command of the image, right? Other corner or length, and I can go ahead and just click anyway for right now, okay? And we have uh, imported our image onto here. Now, I'm going to be uh, using this exercise to go through some of these additional drafting aid tools that we have down here. Uh, most importantly, your OSNAP, uh, your ortho, 
and some grid snap. Um, smart track should uh, I would and then smart track as well. Okay, because we're gonna start drawing these objects right here. Um, so we have our image right here, and the idea is that we now start delineating or tracing our logos um, using our um, or digitally using a Rhino software, right? Um, and for that, right, we're we're gonna look also to the use of layers, right? So the first thing that we should do is we should uh, assign this object a specific layer for it. Right now, it's under the default, which uh, it's okay, right? Now let's go. Uh, let's let's go over how to change these names, right? Let's learn how to change your layer names, right? So if you right click on it on the layer, you click on rename layer, you can call this ref right, right click name layer and call this ref image I can, that's your reference image right? and we're going to start seeing how the use of layers is very important um, in your overall uh, use of the software okay um, let's go ahead and uh, switch onto the red layer right for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and lock the the ref image layer right. I want to show you guys the the, the the locking qualities of this right. I cannot select it anymore, right? Um, so that's good, and that way um, we don't select it uh, by error right in, in any in any way. Now I'm under layer one right now. And the way of do the, to do this is through your, your lines command right here, right? And just like with anything, there's multiple and different approaches to this, right? But a um, good start, right, is the use of polyline, right? With polyline, right, I can start tracing this, right? And start doing this right there. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and type move, right? Bring it out here to the side, right? Because uh, I want to show you right how you use your your for example your O snap in this case to uh, again add a little bit of control to your designs, right? So how do we do this? So I type polyline again, and this first line that I did, you notice right now it's a little bit of an angle right there. If you go ahead and set ortho on, right, you'll see how my cursor gets constrained right on that X axis, right? And I can then start clicking. Now you see it only stays on my 90 degree angles, right? Vertical and horizontal. However, if I hold down shift, right, you turn it off momentarily, right? Now this is where your dynamic, uh, your smart track, I'm sorry, comes into play. I don't know if you see that I'm doing a, a, um, a uh, diagonal right there for this point and right now my smart track is telling me that that point right there it's aligned to this other point which again remember that the idea of this now is that we start um, paying attention to everything that happens on the logo design and not only just following our initial uh, pen strokes or pencil strokes by hand now it's an opportunity for us to uh, ask ourselves, right, uh, how are some of these moments will, uh, how some of these moments will be defined uh, through through the use of geometry, right, and precision modeling, okay? So, again, ortho is on, so it's, uh, it's not allowing me to, for example, make this click right here because it's at a slight angle. So if I go ahead and deselect ortho, right, uh, my cursor is freed, right, and I can start doing that right there. Go ahead and right click, and I can now move this guy out of here. Right, click move, click there, to there. All right. Okay, so that's easy. All right. Now, what if I wanted to start getting some sort of uh, thickness on this guy right here? Additionally, All right. Well, what if I go ahead and type polyline again? All right. Uh, as you can see, it is not necessary, right, to be going 
down to this uh, bar right here so to get ortho on if you go ahead and, and uh, start the command polyline enter uh, you do a click and then you hold down the key shift and while you hold down um you pick the next point right you release shift right select the next point right select the next point right but for that i'm gonna again if you bring your mouse close to that other uh this point that i want as a reference notice that there's a white line that appears right there i don't know if you guys can see right okay so my my cursor is a, a little bit aside from the point i'm going to move it towards that point and you'll see how a white line is going to appear there it is right and if i move my cursor right now it is being guided through that imaginary line so that it is aligned right to that other point which is something that i would want right perhaps something that i did not achieve by doing this by hand but something that i as a designer would like to see right? i mean that this this is aligned right there right and then i go ahead and do my next click right and then uh, I'll do my next one here. Let's say that I don't like where one of the points fell, right? But while you're on the command, on the command, while the command is on and active, if you go ahead and do Control Z as in zebra, right? You undo those points, right? Let's say that you place the point right there and there. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I can do Control Z, right? Control Z and move back, right? So we'll go ahead and move that there and drop that here. Now you see how uh, in this logo or drawing that I did by hand, right, I, I'm starting to get some sort of thickness, right, especially in this case here, right. Now, we want to do that. We want to have our logos to be multi or, or to have um, some sort of a depth, right, and we achieve these by actually making them uh, an outline rather than, than just a line. What do I mean by that? Well, if I go ahead and type line, Actually, I'll go ahead and do polyline, right? Polyline, right? Uh, do a line right there. I'm going to hold on shift so there's a perfect straight line. And then I bring it over here, right? Start doing that right there. Maybe that right there. That right there. Click there. Click there. Click there. Now here, for example, this is a neat, neat uh, tool that we, or neat uh, uh, help that we get from our smart track because I'm holding on shift so that again, this line is completely parallel to the one on top of me. Additionally, I want to do my next click that align to that point. So if I move my cursor there, I'm not going to click. I just move it there, right? I'm still holding shift, right? You see that, that gray line vertical that's being a reference and a guide. I keep moving my cursor down, boom, it automatically locks and I click. This point is now completely aligned to this other point on top of it. And I close this out right there. Right click to exit out of the command. Right? And I get that right there. Right? Now, right, I'm going to go ahead and type copy. Right? And move this out here. Right? I'm starting to get some sort of depth with this logo. Right? Now, additionally, right, we definitely want to make sure that all of your lines and this right i mean we know that these are curves all of your curves are actually connected meaning right we talked about this point's always meeting right or this one's over here that there's no gap in between and we can actually see a good example of what we don't want right here now this line should be uh projected to touch this horizontal line right and this line should actually not extend past where these two lines meet right Let's look at a command that could help us for this run. Right? It's called extend, right? So if I click extend or type extend, enter, right? Select boundary object, right? Or extension length. The boundary object, right? Is where you want this line to be projected. So that would be my boundary object. Press enter when done, right? And then select curve to extend, right? And that's the little segment that I want. So I just click on the, I'm going to undo. Right, I just click on a little bit on the end right there. I'm done with the command, press enter to exit. Right now, the only thing that's left is we want to get rid of this um, piece right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and type trim. Right, enter. Uh, in this case, right, I'm just going to select these two objects right here. Right, with my mouse, left click, right, do a selection window right there, enter. 
select object to trim that's the object to trim and the target and I'll and I'll talk more about the command trim it's a little bit uh, uh, particular in the way that it, it uh, behaves okay now this is good right though for me for example perhaps not perfect there are still a lot of these points and moments in this design that are not really thought of right and um, that I'm, I'm I'm just following and adding clicks right here and adding points right there I don't like that right I want more control. I want more definition. I want more intent in how this is built. And I'll show you guys what I what I mean by that, right? And for that, the grid, it's a great, great help in this case, okay? I am going to, uh, mm, let's see, let's see if I can work actually in this area right here. What if I actually turn my grid snap on right here and I try to repeat this um, following some sort of a order or rhythm with my grid, okay? I'll show you what I mean. If you go ahead and type polyline, right, enter. I'm going to follow, right, this design trajectory of the lines using the grid. And I have grid on. What does that mean? That my cursor, right, snaps to the grid. If I want to do a line that is somewhere inside of this uh, box right there, I can't. Right, I, I can't, right, and I click because right now my cursor is only snapping, right? That means that imagine if uh, uh, my surface that I'm drawing on was a, a magnet, huge magnet, or a piece of metal, uh, vice versa, and then my cursor was either the metal or of the magnet, right? Or two magnets, they attract each other, right? So, so I'm only able to do uh, clicks on the grid, right? Uh, and of course, anywhere that I have one of these drafting tools on. Okay, so I'm gonna do escape. So let me show you what I mean, right? So if you're following along, type polyline. Um, here, as I showed you guys by hand, right, or analog, uh, last time on the drafting on the light table, right? Uh, this line right there is not really neither one full unit or two, it's more like one and a half. But just thinking about design, what actually happens if I actually turn it into two units? So I click there. I have one, two, so I click there. Now, what happens if I go one left, one up, right? And I click there. Uh, I go one down, one left, I click there, right? Uh, in this case, let's see how this looks if I don't actually do this little angle right there and I bring it just straight, right? Oops, I'm gonna undo, right? Because that point is not great right there. So I should go there, there. And let's say there, right? Enter. See, this is now a little bit more defined. Um, not really satisfied with the proportions of this, right? This looks a little bit um, disproportionate to me, right? Uh, this line might be too long for this um, triangle that is happening right here. But what happens when if you type copy, right? Make a copy of this, enter there and actually bring it there um that's that's what's kind of neat very neat about working digitally it's that you can have as many revisions or versions of this as you want right and in and, and relatively quick by just making copies of your work right as you can see off of one idea i already have three four potentially five different subtle but variations of the same idea right now here for example um, I can start playing with this point, right? Well, what happens if I actually bring that point there? Let me bring this whole thing down what unit so that they're not so close together. Right? Um, I don't like that either, right? It looks kind of like a Christmas tree, right? So perhaps this point moves there, right? Rather, I think I like this more. And it's interesting that working with the, just one unit, perhaps in different ways right there, cool. Now we use polyline command, right? Uh, that gives us a single curve, right? Uh, which is a multilinear segments that are joined together, right? Now what happens if I do uh, now want to give this a thickness, right? Well, we know as we set our our our, our file, right? That we're working with units, uh, inches, inch units, right? So we're working with the grid underneath that. 
there's this command called distance, right? If you go ahead and type distance, right? What are the, 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 the marks that we have right here in our drawing board? Well, each of these thicker lines right there, if you go ahead and measure from there to there, again, grid snap must be on so that you snap to the grid right there. It's one inch, right? So what does that mean? That each of these little boxes right there is quarter of an inch, which I'm not really concerned with, um, you know, the end look of this logo, but the reason that I want to get some sort of a scale and in, in, uh, in units it's because remember i want to give some sort of a thickness to this guy right there and the way of doing this is there's this command called offset right offset command uh, offset command will generate a copy of this line right offset it either outwards or inwards and i'll show you guys what i mean uh the first thing that we need to specify is the distance right now that's why i wanted to get some sort of uh, idea of how my units are working right uh, right now, the offset distance is set to one eighth uh, of an inch. Um, I want that, right? But if you don't have it, right, you can just do uh, one over eight, right? So you click distance, you type one over eight, enter, and now your distance, you see that is set to one eighth. Now, the command is asking, right, select the curve to offset, right? That's the curve that I want to offset. Now, you can see, right, what happens if I move my cur cursor outwards or inwards. Right. So I bring it there. Now, yes, that is now thicker area right there, though perhaps too thick, right? So I'm going to make a copy, right, just of this line right there. Now bring it down here. Right? So this was, if I type distance, right, um, and I want to measure the distance from there to that end right there. Uh, making sure that perpendicular is on, right? And this is perhaps a good uh, way to introduce you guys to some of the OSNAP settings right here. OSNAP basically stands for object snap. And again, this is a setting where your cursor will snap or again, be magnetized towards a specific point. What are these points? These points can be endpoints, points that are near, it could be literally a point, a midpoint, a center point, an intersection perpendicular. These are all geometric concepts, right? That again, in this case, I want to uh, get a distance from that point to the perpendicular of this uh, line right there. So in this case, if we turn OSNAP on and we make sure that perpendicular is selected, right? I get this tool right here. Notice that my cursor automatically snaps and it gets gets me that, that little word right there, perp. That means that I'm, if I click right there, I'm going to get a distance from a point that I selected to that perpendicular, right? And of course, we know that distance should be one eighth because that is the length that we offset this by. Okay, but that's too much. What actually happens if I actually offset this line half of that distance, which is somewhere here, right? Uh, with the copy or variation that I have down here. So if I type offset, enter, click on distance, now, the previous distance was 1 8. Let's do half of that, right? What would half of that be? Right, 1 16 of an inch, right? Enter. Now, select curves to offset. This is the curve to offset, right? Now, again, I want to offset it outwards, right? So that um, I don't get these weird moments right there, right? Uh, so I'll click and open, uh, click outwards, right? So, um, subtle change right there. Better, not sure if fully convinced by it, all right? But if uh, I, I'm, I just want to, as a designer, right, access all my, um, um, let's call them, when you're not sure, right? I mean, you really want to go through all the factors and possibilities. I mean, you can't cover them all, but if you think that perhaps there is something that you could do, right, that it will make it look better, or for you, it would feel that it looks better, I really encourage you to try it, especially digitally, because these copies are free, right? I mean, you can make as many as you want right here. And it's very easy to just, if you don't like it, you just don't use it, right? So I'm just curious right now. I mean, would half of that look okay? And a lot of the times we think we can picture it, but until we don't see it, right? It's, it's really hard to actually just picture it, 
right? So we must see it. So I'm just gonna try. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that this uh, is exactly what I will select at the end, but I want to see it. And I only don't want to see it just by itself, but I want to compare the three, right, and see they, how they contrast. So I'm gonna repeat my offset one more time. Select the distance again. Now the previous distance was uh, one sixteenth. Right, our our units were set to one eighth, so that's why this guy see, says right here that it was zero. But that's not true, all right? So the last offset was one sixteenth. Let's do half of that. What is half of one sixteenth? Correct, one thirty second. Right, press enter. Right, select that curve to offset one more time. Now offset it there. Okay, so. This was a, let me move this one unit right here. Move right from there to there. This was a one quarter, quarter no, this was a one eighth offset. Have distance right from there to there. Uh, this was, I'm gonna right click to repeat this command, right? Was a one eighth offset, right? Uh, yep, that's not correct. You see how it tell me one eighth? That's uh, that's not right, right? Because you go ahead and change units, and it's a good way to show you how units work, right? That's what the display precision is. Uh, Rhino will not give me anything smaller in my display precision as I type distance as a as a display smaller than one eighth. However, if I change this to let's say one thirty second and hit OK, type distance one more time, right? Make distance right there now it does give me the 116 right uh, that's how precise it's being now right one to the 16 and even to the three second right there okay uh, I am going to I'm going to work with perhaps all of them at the same time and I'm just gonna try different things okay uh, so I keep further uh, designing this and, and playing with this right uh, what happens what happens if I copy this, right? And this is what we start calling out thinking with, with the computer right here. If I offset in uh, the distance, let's do the 132nd. I want to see how something looks. If I select the curve, rather than offsetting upwards, right? I offset inwards, right? You see how this corner gets, uh, it, it remains. While over here, if I offset it outwards, right, we now get into this left quadrant, which I'm just thinking about this sign, right? And I really like this idea of keeping it exactly as a three unit in its overall length, right? Versus having a one, two, three, plus this little thing right there, right? So now we continue working on this, right? Because we need to close this, this points right there. So we can type line. I can do a line from there to there. Now it's very important, right, that as you do this and you continue to draw, you actually are using your O snap, right? I'm gonna turn off snap off and I'm gonna type line, right? And our grid on a grid is on right there, and it gives us that that reference right there. But you see that right now it's being difficult, right? Because it's not allowing me to click anywhere else because it grid snap it's on and it just wants to snap to the grid. Right, so that doesn't help. Right, so I'm gonna select that line and delete it, and I am going to turn grid snap off. I'm going to type line one more time. Now I want to close this out, right? So I could say that. Well, I mean, I can do a line from there to there, right? Um, and and that's not right, right? You really don't want to do this because if I select that line segment that I just drew, zoom into it, right? I can see that there's a number of things that are wrong with it right and in wrong um craft wise right there's there's a hand drafting craft quality there's also drafting quality or drawing quality in digital okay so let's explore this now uh what's wrong with this well number one right we have open ends right there they are not meeting number two this and right here it's not only not meeting there but it's passing that one right there and number three, right, this line is not vertical. And I can tell by, I don't know if you can see how it has some sort of, looks like little hairs, right? It doesn't look sharp as this one. It, it looks different, right? That's because it's not straight. 
So if I actually go ahead and, and, and select this, move it out of the way, go ahead and type line, enter. I go back and turn on my O snaps, right? Actually, if I place my cursor right there, boom, right? Snapping to that end. And I bring my cursor right here and it snapped to that end, right? And now it is, we don't have any open gaps. No lines are passing each other. And this line segment is vertical, right? And I'll prove it to you guys by moving this and placing it somewhere there. We'll see that it's it, it was not vertical. So I'm going to delete that, the wrong one right there. So that's what you want, okay? You really want these lines to be connected, meet exactly, right, uh, where they should be meeting, right? Now here, for example, this is where, again, we can do a number of... Uh, think a number of ideas right digitally i select that make another copy of it right what happens if i bring it over here but i try two different things right the first one might be to just connect these two type line from there to there but eh, i'm not really convinced by that but what actually happens if i type enter right to repeat the last command well o snap is on snap to that end point Hold down shift so that I have a vertical line and do a projection from there, do that. Now I'm gonna type extend, right, enter. Select this line as the target, enter. Now the curve to extend will be this one, enter, right? So that I now have that different finish right there. Okay, so I can type trim, enter. Select those two lines that are, which are the ones meeting to make the trim, enter and delete that right there, enter. You see, that this logo this logo right here down, down here, it's already different than this one right here. And I can actually further keep uh, modifying this, right? What do I mean? Well, what if I type copy, right? One more time, right? From there to there now. And let's say that I now wanna keep playing with this language that I have going on, which are these diagonals, right? Well, I can do that and I can actually, I'm curious to see how that would look, right? What do I mean? What if I actually select that line, delete it? And what if actually I have this to mimic, right? This angle right here, which is everywhere. How would I do that? Well, I can type line, draw a line from that end to that end. And you don't know it's there, right? But if I click there, right? Cool, selection, so click there selection but if i click here we get this selection menu right because there, it means that there's two things on top of each other i want to select the object that i just drew which has that is the little line segment you can see that as you move your cursor right you get that white preview of which one is which right so in this case that first one where my cursor is is the entire curve along the second one is just this little segment which is what i want so i select that now I'm going to type move, right? and I want to move it from this endpoint to this other endpoint right there. I'm going to press uh, escape, and I'm going to type trim, enter, select these two segments right there, enter, delete that, delete that, enter. Right? And graphic-wise, I think there's a stronger connection right, in the sense of keep using this diagonal right here right but again uh, there's there's other ways that that we can do that right i mean what happens now if i actually you know copy that one more time right and i bring it right there what actually happens if it, at the angle it's the other way right so i can what if i right now rotate right click rotate select that object right there Center of rotation, right? What if I rotate, right? This line, that's the center of rotation. This is my first reference point, but now I rotate it this way over here, all right? So that it intersects right there. I type trim, select those two lines, enter, get rid of that. Okay. Um, perhaps, um, this is again just judging by your you guys you guys are it's, it's your logo and, and, and design so which one is better um i don't know i'm feeling somewhat um attracted to this one right here okay 
but again subtle changes uh, in the um, in design but at the end they, they, they do make a difference okay mm, right so you see how already we went through a number right of different ideas to this let's look at this this guy right here right? I mean it's uh it's pretty pretty weird looking right there um, so I type copy and then bring this guy over here. So from there, maybe bring him over here. Yeah. So what happened? I'm going to move. Right. Um, grid snap on. Okay, then I'm going to snap from that end to that grid point right there. Uh, turn grid snap off. And type line. Right from that end, whole shift. Right, draw my, my reference line right there. Have extend right to like that as my target enter extend that line enter the trim delete that right there and do a line right here and connect that to right um, that's very different than this and this guy over there but still I mean it could be an option okay uh, so that was uh, my line offset using offsets, etc, uh, etc. Et all right, guys. Um, all right, so I'll continue working with the different versions or options of this. So I'll make another copy of this guy right there. Bring it there, right there, on that grid. So grid snap is off, right? So snap it right there. Right click to exit. Now, something that I'm noticing right here is that I like this line to continue going all along right there, right? So if I bring, come to my green layer right there, and if I type line, right, have a line from that endpoint, that whole shift, so that it goes straight right there, bring it right there. If I want this whole piece right here, right, to move up, how could I do that? Well, there's a number of ways that we could uh, shift this by, right? Um, and I'll show you a few, right? So let's look at this right now. So there's this command called break, right? Set the curves to edit, right? So that's the curve that I want to break, right? Now start of, of deletion right there, if I click right there where they meet, and for this my O snap must be on and my intersection must be on right here. Right. Now go ahead and click there, and now click on that other end right there. Now it gave me a break right there, but I was looking more to break this as well. So I can repeat that command right there, select that line to break right there. Right there. Oops, enter, select that line to break right there, and then now let's bring it over here. All right. Uh, so I got that, and, and these already got broken, right? Let's go ahead and type move, right? Enter, select these objects to move right? from there to that perpendicular, right? Well, now these are aligned. Now there's now a few, some cleanup to do, right? All right. Now I'm going, now I'm going to uh, break this again to get rid of this line right there. This little segment so break it right there uh, and actually want to delete this as well so I to enter I break enter I want to break this from there to right there uh, I'm going to select my my guideline right there delete it right um, and I select just break so I'll do break one more time from there to there hmm Right click, maybe from there to there. Hmm. Right click, break from there to there. There we go. Uh, and I delete that. Now, I have them where I want them now. I can type the command connect. Right? And I select first curve to connect from there to there. Enter to repeat, connect that to that. And then now, Right, I'm actually continuing with this idea, right, of the geometry, let's put it uh, that way. Right, uh, what happens if I move 
transferring this object from that end to actually the grid. And I type connect one more time. Turn there to there, there to there. there. This is reading differently, right? Now this gap is smaller here than it was back then. Uh, and you can additionally right, start thinking, hmm, right, what actually happened if I um, offset this line this way right here so that, again, it ends there. Let me show you what I mean. So I want to make a copy of this, right, anchor from there to there, right? Uh, there's this command called explode, right, enter. It means that if you select a current that is made out of Different segments right there, and you press select it, press enter. Now this turns into individual line segments, right? So I have exploded, right? And if I type now offset, right? Uh, now for distance, you can either enter it or you can reference it. Now for this offset distance, right? I'm going to reference whatever distance I have here. So I click on distance, and rather than actually typing it and entering here, I can actually specify it right here. So I want my offset to be the same distance that I have here to there. Now I select the curve that I want to offset, and it offsets there. Um, now notice that it's in a different color because I did not realize I was on my layer four. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to layer one. But it's a good chance to actually learn how to change an object's uh, layers. So you select the object, and you should go to your layer, uh, properties panel. If you don't have it, right, that's okay. Uh, we can right-click on this uh, panels right here, and then bring up properties. Um, and I recommend you or encourage you to right, move your properties panel right to be docked like that, right, to have them both on top of each other, right? So you want to have your layers on top and your properties on the bottom, right? We select the object, go under the layers, and select the layer that we want to change it to. Now, I'm going to delete. Uh, I'm actually going to run another explode command. Explode. Select this line right there to explode. Now, what I want is to actually delete this line right there, right? Um, I don't necessarily want to delete this line, but I do want to extend it. So I'm going to type extend. Now my boundary is this line right there, enter. The line that I want to extend is this one right there, enter. All right? I repeat my command, right click, boundary, enter, line to extend, enter, done, enter. I want to do some cleanup, type trim, right? Select those two lines right there, delete, delete, enter. Enter to repeat last command, select those two, enter, delete, enter, exit, enter one more time to reset, uh, uh, run the trim command one more time, select all of this right here, enter, delete, delete, enter. Right. So what have I done now? If I go into my purple layer, for example, uh, make sure that grid snap is on and I type rectangle, my logo in this case fits exactly in a 3 by 2 area. Versus this one right here that that it was outside of that. And again, these are very, very subtle, you know, uh, differences and variations, slight variations. But again, in design, this matters, right? I mean, uh, it, it's, these are decisions that must be at least thought of and evaluated and studied. And you can see already the number of already... Um, ideas and different iterations off of one single uh, idea. All right. So we'll go back to my original layer right there. And we have that. Now the last thing that we want to do, I'm going to copy this one more time. All right. Enter, copy it from there to there. Delete its box right there. You At the end, you want to make sure that you join them back. Remember that we explode them. All right. So if you type join, the command join, select objects for join okay? uh, and now the, the order matters so wherever you start go around it right and you want to click all your lines right there boom, 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 okay? and right the command automatically exits once you go around the entire lines that you want to connect if I go back and select one line you see that I select all of them Right, versus over here that I said that one right there, and I only get that. Okay, so.
So that for me, it's a, it's a, it's an okay idea, right? I'm, I'm gonna leave it as a potential option right there, right? We have, we have more to, to work with right here. And you can see how now I was playing with uh, angles right here, right? Bringing it a little bit more. Uh, this angle, right, changes from this option to that option, right? That rather than being 90 degrees, right, actually, rather than being 90 degrees, it's actually somewhere downwards right here. Um, what else? Well, we can we can look into some other ideas, right? Let's go over this command again picture, right? Uh, let's bring now, let's see what's under five and six, right? So we, right, uh, I, can, I can show you that um, if pictures work the same as objects, in this case, I can actually snap to this right here, right? And, and you snap to the other corner right there. And they're there, they're just on top of each other. So if I select one and move it to the side, I get that. Okay. Uh, let's not forget to save file. Oops. I, I clicked on save small. Uh, I'm gonna escape, file, save. Share desktop right now. Uh, I'm gonna call this it. Control logos, then my initials in desktop save. Very important. Okay, so I'm on layer one. I can continue to explore some of these guys right here. Right? Let's look at this for example. Right? Do um and again this one's in this case I was heavily using the grid which again it's nice because I have another grid right here in the software which I can con and in turn snap to all right but we'll see that perhaps we may not be able to use it everywhere let's see let's see how this works all right so if I go ahead and type polyline right enter uh, and maybe I want to recreate this right it was uh, one two up two to the right Right, so we click anywhere there, one, two up, one, two to the right, and then the other point is right there. And right click to exit. Now, how about this right there? Well, the way that I did it by hand, it was half of the square right there, right? And then I skipped uh, one unit, right? And, and added that one right there. So, it's a little bit tricky here because I cannot step, uh, snap to half of the grid. I could if I was to go ahead and change the settings for this, but maybe I'll show you guys how to do this the different way by using uh, guidelines or construction lines, right? I'm gonna change my layer right there. I'm gonna type line, enter. I'm gonna do a line from that endpoint to snap to that uh, intersection of the grid, right click. Now, having O snap on and my mid on, if I now type polyline, enter, uh, I start from that end right there. I can actually snap to the mid of that line segment, right from there to there. Right click. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. And additionally, right, the next one is also um, halfway from the two parallel lines that make up that, that grid. Now I can get a snap reference for that, right? By either drawing another line that falls in between both of these lines right there, or I can actually type move, right? Select that line right there, enter from there, move it to there. Because it's already the right size. I can then type, um, right? Is, is that correct? Looks like it, right? If not, that's something that I can study, right? If I don't like how it looks, type polyline, right? And then from there to there to there, right click. Now, don't forget, right? Don't get confused with, with lines. These two lines should be under the, the, the layer because that is layer one, because that is part of the design. Now, this green one is the reference line, so I can go ahead and delete it. Uh, not a big fan of this, to be honest with you. So let's keep looking at different ideas, right? Type copy, oops, copy, enter, select objects, enter, 
move from there to there, right click. I'm going to do my reference line one more time, right from there to there, just to visually see it. Now I can actually show you right that if I select these two lines, now if I, with my different selection tool, right, placing my cursor top left quadrant, do a left click drag, I will only select that point right there, type move, and I can move those points to actually meet there, right there. I, I select that, delete that. And I think that's uh, visually more appealing than this big old gap right there. Perhaps by hand it looks okay or it doesn't stand out as much, but uh, digitally it does. Right, so I'll go ahead and type uh, move to give myself um, a little bit more of space right here. Move right there and bring it. Maybe too much. Right, maybe there. Okay. Now, what about this thickness thing again, right? What if I do offset, right? Uh, the distance, let's do something small one more time, 132nd, which it doesn't really matter the size because then you can scale it up or down. Remember, it was part of the logo consideration that logos remain loyal to their proportions so it doesn't matter how much you blow them up or small um the proportion remains okay and and you'll see what i mean in a second so select curve to offset right and see if i want to offset this curve now inwards right right click to repeat the command and that one inwards as well right and actually like that it's green right because i can um reference or or know which is the ones that i want to trim because i'm going to go ahead Select both greens only, so green, green, enter, click, click, delete, enter. All right, enter to repeat the last command. Green, green, enter, click, click, delete. Great. Okay, now I can select these two lines right there. And how can I select uh, more than one thing together? If I select that object right there, hold shift and select this other one, I have to select them together. I'm going to change its layer to red. And also I'm going to type join, right? So that I actually have them join as a single segment, right? Um, I'll go ahead and right click to repeat the join command and I'll go ahead and join these two, okay? Now I want to offset that one right there, right? But I want to keep that as the center, meaning that I actually want to offset both out half of 132nd. What? Let me show you. All right. I actually want to do an offset, right, of this curve. Now, there's this setting right here that it says bolt size. If you go ahead and click on that, select the curve, you see that now you'll do an offset on both sides. Now, you're doing an offset on both sides of 132nd, but I actually want at the end that the overall thickness is 132nd. Because if I now measure, right, or if I was to do that offset, this distance from there to here, perpendicular, is 116. I want it to be half of that. Hmm, how do I get that? Let me show you what I mean. If you actually repeat offset uh, both sides, right, I select curves to offset, right, now I'm going to change the distance, right, to be half of 132nd, which is 164. Enter, right? Look at that, right? Now, if I do distance from that point to that perpendicular, that's my 132nd. And perhaps everything will make more sense once I clean up this a little bit more. So select that and delete it. Oops. Select this and delete it. Select that and delete it, right? And uh, these two should be sent to the red layer right there. Uh, and that, that was just the reference line. Now I can delete it. Right, and I need to do some cleanup right here. Right, trim. Right, I'm going to select all of this mess right there. Right, clean it up. Delete that. Delete that right there. Delete that right there. Delete that right there, and delete this right there. Right click. Right. Now this is a different version of what I have. Um, Oh, it's gone. I'm gonna go ahead and type move. And let's bring it in here because it's nice to see the 
the the uh, process rather the progress difference right here okay uh, and we only need to move right that point from there to there so that was just the line or string uh, version of it this is now with the thickness i don't know where that comes from so i'll go ahead and click and leave it all right so this is now giving again depth to this same idea all right so go ahead and move it actually i'll do a copy right of this right so again i, I really like when we're able to trace our steps all right yeah there now i have the logo calls for the same the same design right here to actually be copied and flip right 90 degrees right uh, we're working by the way we're working with two letters here right ad for the architecture department or architecture discipline this was just the uh, there we go architecture department right that's just uh thank you well i mean um i'll just uh work on this exercise thinking as of, i was thinking of developing a logo for the architecture department right and epcc as you might be familiar with has that uh um you know the upcc logo right it's uh, something like this so that's basically where i got the idea from a and the d right um so again we're working with a and d so this will be my a right now i can either copy right this guy right here select it right there um bring it let's say over here right i can type rotate enter select this guy right there enter rotate it from that point to that point to that point right there type move and i know i'm going fast but i want to show you that it's actually a faster way of doing this all right if i type copy one more time for this all right and i bring it let's say there I actually i can actually do a copy and a rotation with the same command all with the same command using rotate right so select objects to rotate i want to rotate that guy right there now you see how there's this option up here that says copy no what happens if you actually say say yes or set it to yes right that's actually going to give you a copy of this that is rotated now how does rotation work well it's asking for the center of rotation which we know it's, it's this end right here Right now, the angle or first reference point. In this case, we're actually selecting a reference point, which is that guy right there, which is the other end of this uh, piece of design. And notice that right now, I'm, uh, also, uh, grid snap is on, so it's snapping to grids and other points. But if you go ahead and hold on Shift, right, that brings the ortho on. And remember that ortho's characteristic is that it constrains your cursor on the vertical and horizontal. What it does does that, what it does that as well. Uh, with rotation right so i click there and i can do notice that i can do as many rotations as i want right i can keep going doing that right click uh, i'm going to type move right so move up, all of this out of the way and then from there to there uh i don't want that i just wanted to show you that you can do that but i'm going to delete that and you know there you go that would be my let's say idea for um this logo right there don't forget as you go through this, right? File, save. Okay. Um, then now again, it's. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about scaling, right? So I'm going to do a copy of this, right? Uh, bring it there. And say that I wanted to see how this looks if I was to blow it up by two. There's this command called scale. Enter. Right. Select the objects that you want to scale enter base point in this case the base point will be this end right here that means that things are going to grow right from there right escape factor or reference point uh since i'm just doing a, a a two right or two times bigger i can just press two enter and notice that it went from one two three four units long at least this piece to one two three four five six seven eight twice as big as that. Now, I just wanted to see how it looked a little bit bigger. So that's the uh, scale command right there. And this is um, a few of the tools that you should definitely use, right, as you're uh, redefining your logo. Now here, for example, um, there's this option right here, which is basically the same pieces that I have here 
uh, arranged differently, right? This guy came over here down rather than up. Now that is something very, so that I can actually study very easily on the computer, right? Because I can make a copy of this, right? From there, let's say to there, right click to exit, right? I can type move, enter, select the objects to move, enter. I want to move it from there to there, right? I'm gonna type move, right? Select these two right there and bring it right there. And I'm able to look at all of this uh, together and you saw how, how fast this was. Now, this was a very linear logo, right? Meaning that it's all linear segments, right? Very geometric, very uh, rigid in its construction, meaning that it's highly loyal and highly uh, following the grid. Um, I'm going to make another video that I talk about more fluid and more curvilinear projects because uh, I, I, I saw some of those and I know we talked about them uh, in class as well. Right? But as it is, this is already an hour long. Um, so I'll create the next uh, a different video or th those different instructions on a different video. Right? But again, um, don't forget about your tools and commands, right? Offset, trim, extend line, polyline, um, rotate, uh, go ahead and I would, uh, I really suggest that you go ahead and, and give yourself a little cheat sheet, right? Where you start drawing or, or writing down these commands, right? Just for reference, especially as you are learning the software. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and click save right here. Uh, standard save. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and then I'll see you guys on the next one where I talk about a little bit more fluid designs. Okay, guys?